Displacement Questions Using Trigonometry Now sometimes we're working on a displacement problem and we need to incorporate some of our trig knowledge to finish it up. Let's explore a couple examples of this. For our first example, let's go back to our soccer field situation. And what if the question was, to say hi to a friend on the opposite corner of a soccer field, you walked 100 meters east, then 50 meters south. What was your resulting displacement? In this case, we need to determine both the magnitude and the direction ourselves. Because we formed a right angle here, we could use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the magnitude of the resulting displacement. That is, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Since our resulting displacement would be our hypotenuse, we'd plug in the numbers like this. And with a square root at the end, we'd get 112 meters. And we look at it and see that it makes sense that our walk is going to be bigger than either of these sides, walking diagonally, but smaller than walking all the way around the edges. Now, for the direction, we can be more specific this time. If we identify this angle as theta, a common variable for an angle, and now we need a way to determine what this angle theta is. We can see that the 50 is opposite of theta, and 100 is adjacent to theta, so thinking back to our SOKATOA, we can determine theta using the tan ratio, opposite over adjacent. Plugging it all in, the tan ratio would look like this, and solving for theta, we use the inverse tan, and we get 26.6 degrees. So, now we're ready to write our final displacement, both magnitude and direction. Well, the magnitude is easy, it's just 112 meters, but what about the direction? We know the angle is 26.6 degrees. And since this is east here, and we're going 26.6 degrees towards the south, that is south of east, we would say 112 meters at 26.6 degrees south of east. Note that if you solved for the angle down here, you'd come up with 63.4 degrees. Notice that 90 minus 26.6 degrees is 63.4 degrees, which shouldn't be a surprise. In this case, you might have answered 112 meters at 63.4 degrees east of south. That is, you'd start at the south here, and you'd move 63.4 degrees toward the east. Now, either answer is perfectly correct, as they have the same magnitude and just two different ways of describing the exact same direction. Another example. A plane that is taking off ascends at 30 degrees above the horizontal. After flying 1,000 meters or 1 kilometer, how high is it? In this case, we're given the information about the resulting displacement that is 1,000 meters at 30 degrees above the horizontal. We have both magnitude and direction. Now it's always a good idea to draw the situations just to keep yourself clear. Now this time we'll draw in two other displacements that add up to the final resulting displacement. The first could go horizontally and the second would go up vertically. They both add up to the final resultant making the vector diagram look just like the previous example. Two perpendicular vectors adding up to be the same as a resulting vector. I'll point out that we could have drawn it in like this as well. We'd come up with the exact same answer. Either way is perfectly fine. Given that, let's just stick with our original diagram to complete this example. We're looking for height, which is this side. So let's call that ry for the y direction. And we can call this side rx for the x direction. Breaking down vectors 
into two perpendicular parts like this is called breaking a vector into components. And it proves real useful sometimes. So how are we going to determine our ry? Let's see, ry is the opposite from the 30 degree angle, and the 1000 meters is the hypotenuse. So we could use our SOHCAHTOA again and see that the ratio sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. And we can lay out our equation like this. Then solve for ry by multiplying both sides by a thousand meters to get our answer. We could answer the question by saying that ry is 500 meters up, or the plane rises by 500 meters during the 1,000 meters of ascent. So, in this tutorial, we took another look at displacement and figured out how we could use our trig knowledge to determine both magnitudes and directions relating to displacement.